and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, I will link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live. We are also live on YouTube. It'll also be in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast. In the News is brought to you by the world's worst diabetes mom, real life stories of raising a child with diabetes, winner of the American Bookfest Prize for Best New Nonfiction. Available in paperback, on Kindle, or as an audiobook, all at Amazon.com. Our top story this week, new congressional report from Democrats on the House Committee on Oversight and Reform, keeping the focus on insulin pricing. It says Medicare could have saved more than $16.7 billion on insulin if we're allowed to negotiate like other health programs. This final report is the culmination of an almost three-year investigation. Documents from Eli Lilly, Nova Nordisk, and Sanofi indicate these firms, quote, raised their prices in lockstep in order to maintain pricing parity. One particularly damning quote, a Novo Nordisk pricing analyst remarked, maybe Sanofi will wait until tomorrow morning to announce their price increase. That's all I want for Christmas. A surprising move in Europe announced today. Uh, they pulled the SGLT2 inhibitor for Ziga from the market for people with type 1. AstraZeneca said the decision isn't about safety, but didn't explain further. There are already concerns about an increased risk of DKA from SGLT2 inhibitors in people with type 1. That's why they aren't approved in the U.S. But many advocates say the benefits outweigh the risks. The U.K. chief executive of JDRF said it is appalling that the drug has been withdrawn as, quote, many people with type 1 are finding it an effective and useful tool to help manage their glucose levels. The FDA issues a warning to Medtronic over its diabetes headquarters. Now, this is related to a July inspection that led to recalls of the MiniMed 600 series pump and a remote controller device for MiniMed 508 and Paradigm pumps. Medtronic says they are implementing a range of corrective actions and process improvements related to the observations and will continue to review these actions with the FDA. Here's a new one. Israeli scientists have discovered that the human fetus makes insulin in its intestines before birth. And they say this means that adults may have a backup system that could be reactivated to treat diabetes. This is peer-reviewed research published in the journal Nature Medicine. These scientists say there is a lot here they don't even understand. Practical applications are a long way off. But the hope is that some kind of medication or intervention could one day reactivate these cells in adults. There is good news for Sugar Mate fans. A lot of you probably already know this. Late last week, the app makers announced it would once again connect with Dexcom for U.S. customers. They issued an apology, thanked users for their patience, still working on reconnecting for those outside the U.S. This is all about changes to the Dexcom API, and that is the way apps talk to each other. And speaking of Dexcom, they have expanded their physical presence, opening a second large facility in Arizona. Big celebration this week, ribbon cutting ceremony at the 500,000 square foot facility and a job fair. In looking into this story, I found that earlier this year, the other Dexcom center was used as an indoor drive through COVID vaccination site, a partnership between Dexcom, the Arizona Health Department and Walgreens. Time Magazine's Heroes of the Year are the scientists behind the COVID vaccines. While there are, of course, many people at work here, they highlighted four, including Dr. Drew Weissman, who has lived with type 1 for more than 50 years. He and his other partners began working on mRNA science for vaccines in 1997, publishing a landmark paper in 2005. There's a lot more to the story, of course. Diabetes Mind ran a photo of Weissman almost a year ago now getting the vaccine. And in that photo, you can see his insulin pump on his belt. Miss America memorabilia moves to the Smithsonian, including items from Nicole Johnson, the first Miss America with type 1. Johnson posted about this on her social media, saying she was donating her insulin pump, the swimsuit she wore, and letters from children with diabetes that she received during her reign in 1999. The exhibit will mark 100 years of the competition, and some other items include a hearing aid compatible microphone used by Heather Whitestone, the first deaf Miss America, and the first swimsuit worn in the pageant. New York Times article out this week about model Lila Moss wearing her Omnipod. You all have seen this during a fashion show a few months ago, but they included quotes from a few other runway models with type one. Uh, nothing too new here, but worth mentioning. Uh, it's not uncommon, these models say, for pumps and CGMs to be airbrushed out if the client or the model wishes it to be. But they do keep their tech on for the shoot. It was an interesting little behind the scenes slice of life for these models. 
Before I let you go, a reminder that the podcast this week is all about my favorite things. I had a great time with this episode. It's short, it's fun. And I talk about accessories, uh, storage, getting organized, toys, books, and a lot more. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts, or if you're listening to this on a podcast app, just go back one episode. And next week, we have a predictions episode. Diabetes Mind Managing Editor Mike Hoskins joins me as we talk about tech and a lot more in the year to come. And that is in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.